Ryan Thomas at East West here. And for many of you, this is the video you've been waiting for. We get so many questions on our YouTube videos asking us when we'll be releasing a template. Well, today is that day. So let's cover a couple things up front. Number one, right now, this template is only available for Logic Pro and Cubase users. And in this video, we're just gonna be looking at the Logic Pro template because they're set up pretty much identically unless otherwise noted. But again, this is just Logic Pro and Cubase for now. Now that's gonna change pretty soon, actually. We're gonna be rolling out this template for some of the other popular digital audio workstations in the very near future. Number two, this is a general Composer Cloud Plus template. So it includes instruments from various libraries across our entire catalog. And the idea here was to give you a template that was capable of scoring about 90% of projects that you might come across as a composer. So you can find all the materials for the template in the link in the video description. And that includes the MIDI data for the demo you're hearing right now, which was of course produced using this template. So let's go ahead and explore some of the features and some of the reasoning behind this template. So let's briefly talk about the instrument selection. And you of course have all of the main sections of the orchestra represented. You've got strings, you've got brass, woodwinds, tuned percussion, orchestral percussion. And then you have choirs and vocals, your cinematic percussion, which is generally gonna feature percussion that you don't typically find in an orchestra, but that often features in cinematic soundtracks. Then you've got some synths and then world instruments. Now, these are all patches that I find myself using the most in the East-West catalog. So they're just kind of my hand-picked patches, but you can, of course, add to this template. You can switch out instruments and it's designed to be very modular. Now, as far as the individual instruments in these sections, let's just say within the strings, you've got instruments from Hollywood Strings 1, Hollywood Strings 2, and even Hollywood Fantasy Orchestra. And the reasoning here was to just give you the absolute best patches from all these different libraries and patches that I've found just work together exceptionally well. So for example, if you need some high strings for a really epic cinematic melody, you know, you've got the high strings from Hollywood Fantasy Strings. Very expressive, very bold. So you've got a few different palette options when it comes to all of these instrument groups, especially strings. Now in the brass, you've got mostly Hollywood brass. You also have some of the content from Hollywood Fantasy Brass. These are the three Wagner tubas. I just absolutely love these. Now for the woodwinds and orchestral percussion, we're mostly using instruments from Hollywood Orchestra Opus Edition. Then in the choirs, you've got a couple instances of the word builder patches from Hollywood choirs. And these just always sound great in a mix. super easy to work with. You've got the full choir patch from Hollywood Fantasy Voices, and this is a key switch patch. If you're not familiar with key switches, we will go over those in just a minute. So you've got a couple different options there. And then in the cinematic percussion, you've just got some patches that I find myself going back to a lot. Uh, like the three large Tycos, these are from Hollywood Fantasy Percussion, and these just have such an incredible low-end presence, and I just find them to be super versatile. Very expressive. You've got a huge range of dynamics there. And of course, you've got some synths if you're gonna be doing some hybrid scoring. I really love Horns in the Deep. This is from Iconic. And by the way, in the synths section, you've got both Iconic as well as Forbidden Planet represented. I find that one to just be super inspiring. And then finally, you've got just a couple of world instruments 
You've got the Deduc from Silk. I use that one just a ton. The Three Dulcimers from Hollywood Fantasy Strings. All right, next, let's go ahead and cover key switches and continuous controllers. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with how key switches work, they are basically using notes on the keyboard outside of the instrument's range to trigger different articulations. So you can see here, as I am playing through these notes on the keyboard, it's changing the articulation. Okay, next, let's talk about continuous controllers and how they are being handled in this template. Now, if you're not familiar with what continuous controllers are, they're basically controls that affect different parameters of an instrument like dynamics or vibrato. So for example, in this particular patch, dynamics are being controlled by CC1, which is usually mapped to your mod wheel and CC just stands for continuous controller. So you can hear the dynamics responding to that mod wheel. Now for some of these other instruments like the low strings from Hollywood Fantasy Strings, dynamics are actually controlled by CC11. And that's typically not mapped to the mod wheel on your keyboard. So for the tracks that are hosting instruments with dynamics controlled by CC11, I inserted an instance of the MIDI modifier and this is basically taking CC1 input and it's adding CC11 to it. So you can see as I'm moving the mod wheel, it's also affecting CC11, which again, in this instrument is controlling dynamics. Now, the reason we set it up like this is because many of our users might have access to a MIDI keyboard that only has a mod wheel and a pitch bend wheel. And it's really important that you be able to control those dynamics. So let's say that you have a keyboard like this with lots of different knobs and sliders that you can assign the different continuous controllers to, and you want that independent control over CC1 and CC11. All you have to do to turn off this feature is disable the plugin. Now, I should point out that in the Cubase version, this function is being achieved within the Opus engine itself. So if you want to change that or otherwise modify it, just navigate to the automation window and you can see that macro that is adding CC11 to the CC1 input. And if you want that independent control over CC1 and CC11, you can just right click on this macro and remove it. So let's go ahead and talk about the routing and the processing. And we're doing something a little different with this template in that we're not just giving you some basic instruments in a logic session. This is fully mixed, mastered, and everything is routed in such a way that exporting stems should be fairly convenient. So this really is designed to just be a professional tool. And the way this is set up is actually fairly simple. Each section has its own bus and most of the processing is taking place at the level of the bus. So this EQ, because it's on the strings bus, is affecting all of these tracks. Same for the brass, same for the woodwinds, and so on and so forth. And let's go ahead and hear what some of these EQs are doing. So let's start here at measure 20 for the strings. And I'm just gonna solo the strings bus and toggle the EQ on and off. Now let's hear what the EQ is doing on the brass. So let's go ahead and start here uh, near the end. This should be a good spot. So the EQs are fairly subtle, but they're just kind of helping to clean up the sound and enhance it a little bit. Now, if you want access to the buses in the main window in Logic, I've created all of these tracks here. So if you wanted to do some automation, for example, in the strings, let's say that you wanted more reverb on one part, you can do that 
in this track. And again, you've got the tracks represented here for all of the various buses, including the reverbs. So let's actually talk about the reverb setup in this template because that is such a huge part of the sound. And it's important to know how these are working with the buses and the processing. And I'll start by noting that most of my reverb sends are on the buses. And that's because you generally want the processed signal being sent to the reverbs rather than unprocessed because maybe there's a frequency that you don't like and you don't necessarily want that being represented in the reverbs. Now, most instrument groups have their own dedicated reverbs. So for example, strings have their own impulse response and spaces too. Same thing for brass. It's the same room, but this is the brass specific impulse response. And then all of the buses are also sending to an algorithmic verb. This is just a stock logic reverb that I happen to like a lot. And it is fairly common practice in the mixing world to send your instrument groups to both a convolution reverb like East West Spaces 2, as well as that algorithmic verb like Logic's chroma verb. So let's hear this with and without the reverb so you can hear just how much these are doing. Spaces 2 is just such a special reverb. So here it is with the reverb. And now off. So definitely a big part of the sound. Now, the only other thing to note here is that you do have some mastering plugins on the stereo out. You've got this tube EQ that's kind of sweetening up the sound. You've got a compressor. You've got a multiband compressor. So just be aware that those are there. And that's actually pretty much it. So let's go ahead and check out this demo so that you can get a sense of what this template is capable of. Now, if there's something I didn't cover in this video, that's because it's probably addressed in the manual. It's a very short read. I highly encourage you to check it out. And it's basically gonna tell you how to optimize Opus and install the instruments that you need to run this template. This is a general Composer Cloud Plus template, so it makes use of a lot of different instruments from a lot of different libraries. And that individual instrument download function will definitely come in handy if you don't already have all of these libraries installed. So I hope you have a lot of fun with this. Definitely tag us on our social media accounts if you create something with this template. We'd love to hear it. And if you liked this video, be sure to like it, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future content. That's all for now. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.